Good evening, visitors. Welcome to the Australian War Memorial's last post ceremony. My name is Jared Pratt, and joining us today from the Royal Australian Air Force is aircraft woman Taylor Hoskinson. Today, we commemorate the 75th anniversary of the Battle of Wau. In January 1943, Japanese forces sailed from Rabaul on the island of New Britain, disembarked at Ley on the east coast of New Guinea, and began advancing overland towards the Australian base at Wau. A race began with the Japanese moving overland, hampered by the terrain, and the Australians moving by air and hampered by the weather. A mining hub prior to the Second World War, Wau had been occupied by the 2nd 5th Independent Company and the New Guinea Volunteer Rifles, known as Kanga Force, since the beginning of 1942. This force was later joined by the 2nd 7th Independent Company. With the large Japanese forces now threatening the small garrison, the 17th Brigade began its transfer by air from Milne Bay into Wau to bolster the defences. The 2nd 6th Battalion first encountered the Japanese force at Wendumi on the 28th of January. Bad weather that day stopped further troops and equipment from being ferried into Wau. On the 29th of January, 75 years ago today, with the Japanese launching their attack on Wau, the weather cleared allowing transport aircraft to bring in troops from the 2nd, 5th and 2nd, 7th battalions. Much needed equipment, including two dismantled 25-pounder guns, along with reinforcements from the 2nd, 3rd Independent Company and the 7th Machine Gun Battalion, were also flown in. By the 4th of February, threatened with encirclement and with all hopes of capturing Wau Gorn, the Japanese were forced to withdraw. Australian forces suffered 349 men killed, wounded or missing. The Japanese were far higher, with an estimated 1,200 men killed and an, unnumber, an unknown number wounded or missing. Today we remember well. We pay our respects to the men and women commemorated here on the Roll of Honour and to the survivors who returned home. We're honoured to acknowledge Mr John King, President, ACT Branch, Returned and Services League of Australia. We welcome the veterans who have served, those that are still serving, and the families that support them. We acknowledge the members of RSL and Services Clubs Association, RSL Victoria and RSL Queensland, who are watching the broadcast of this ceremony from around Australia. During the ceremony, wreaths will be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection by visitors to the memorial. I invite you all now to please stand and join in singing the National Anthem. The Australian War Memorial was the vision of Charles Bean, Australia's First World War official historian. Bean landed with the Australian troops on Gallipoli on the 
and stayed with them at the front through to the end of the war. The idea of this national memorial and museum came to him at Pozieres, France, in the depths of the bloody fighting of 1916. Bean's idea was that this would be a place where families and friends could mourn loved ones buried in faraway places. It would also be a place that could help all Australians understand what these men and women had endured and what they had done for us. Bean's vision, to which we remain true, is best expressed as inscribed in the entrance to the memorial's galleries. Here is their spirit in the heart of the land they loved, and here we guard the record which they themselves made. Tonight, we will read the story behind just one of those on the Roll of Honour, which lists the names of more than 102,000 men and women who have given their lives for us in war and operations for more than a century. But first, we present a lament, Flowers of the Forest. Wreaths or floral tributes will now be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection. remember and pay tribute to Flight Sergeant Rex Crespin Shoda. Born in Ararat in Western Victoria on the 21st of December 1921, Rex Shoda was the son of Carl and Bertha Shoda. Growing up, young Rex attended the local school and later became a farmer in Sea Lake, a small town in the Mallee region of northwestern Victoria. On the 28th of May 1943, Shoda enlisted in the Royal Australian Air Force. While he was in service, he met Margaret Lynch of the Women's Auxiliary Australian Air Force. Rex and Margaret were engaged in December 1943, but Rex soon embarked on overseas service before they had the chance to marry. As part of the Empire Air Training Scheme, Rex Shoda was one of almost 27,500 RAF pilots, navigators, wireless operators, gunners and engineers who throughout the course of the war joined Royal Air Force squadrons or Australian squadrons in Britain. Shoda had been training as an air gunner. After his arrival in Britain, he undertook further training before being posted to number 460 squadron, Royal Australian Air Force. Number 460 squadron would become the most highly decorated Australian squadron in Bomber Command and the squadron that suffered the highest casualties. Flying twin-engine Vickers Wellington medium bombers 
and in the four-engined Avro Lancaster heavy bomber, the squadron lost over 1,000 men. Australians, British, Canadians, New Zealanders, and South Africans. Almost 600 Australians from 460 Squadron are listed here on the Roll of Honour. On the morning of the 19th of March 1945, 22 Lancasters from 460 Squadron took part in a raid on Hanau, Germany. On their return from the mission, low cloud cover reduced visibility over home airfields of the Bomber Command Squadrons in Lincolnshire, England. The Lancaster in which Schroeder was the tail gunner was being home to RAF Helston Airfield, only a few kilometres from 460 Squadron's home at Binbrook, when it crashed into high ground while making its approach toward the runway. Schroeder and all six of his crewmates were killed. Pilot Officer Geoffrey Brown, Flight Sergeant Llewellyn Bryant, Warrant Officer George McBride, Flight Sergeant Jack Stacey, Warrant Officer Alexander Moss, and British Airman Sergeant Jack David. Rex Schroeder was 23 years old. The Australian members of the crew were, were recovered from the crash and buried side by side in the RAF cot at Cambridge City Cemetery. Rex Schroeder's name is listed on the Roll of Honour on my left among almost 40,000 Australians who died while serving in the Second World War. A photograph on his headstone is displayed beside the pool of reflection. This is but one of the many stories of service and sacrifice told here at the Australian War Memorial. We now remember Flight Sergeant Rex Crespin Schroeder, who gave his life for us, for our freedoms, and in hope of a better world. Please stand for the reading of the ode and the sounding of the last post. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. we forget. We leave you this evening with the words of the memorial's founder, Charles Bean. Many a man lying out there at Pozier or in the low scrub at Gallipoli with his poor tired senses barely working through the fever of his brain has thought in his last moments, well, well it's over. But in Australia, they will be proud of this. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, that concludes the last post ceremony. We thank you all for visiting the Australian War Memorial and wish you all a very good evening.